In this video, we will walk you through an IceQ channel install on a cold wall freezer. First, the tools you'll need are the following. Impact drill driver, wire cutters, inch and eighth bimetal hole saw blit, helping hands, moving blanket, plumber's putty, step ladder, pen and paper to write down the serial number of the controller, and any other tools you might have in your toolkit. Additionally, you will need a rubber mallet and an ice scraper to help you remove the ice from the ceiling of the freezer during a cold wall install. Next, the following is what's contained in your ice cube kit. The ice cube kit includes one channel sized appropriately to fit your particular freezer model and two pairs of flat sheet metal cold wall brackets that slide together. The parts bag included in the cold wall kit contains the following. Power supply, zip tie, one inch hole grommets, cable ties, Y adapter, coax sealant, half inch sheet metal hex screws, and one controller. Once you have all the necessary tools and materials at your site, you can begin the install. The first step is freezer prep. Begin by removing enough ice to allow 12 to 16 inches of elbow room at the top of the ceiling of the freezer. Next, lay down a moving blanket on top of the ice to collect any ice or debris that may fall during the installation. Once your workplace is prepared, you can move forward with the ice cube cold wall channel install. Step number two. It is necessary to remove all the frost buildup and ice on the ceiling of the freezer. To do this with ease, temporarily turn off the freezer. After about three to five minutes, you should be able to use a rubber mallet and an ice scraper to knock the ice off from the ceiling. When doing this, be sure to note all the areas where the frost is built up, as this determines where the coils are within the ceiling. It is critical that you do not try to screw any screws into a portion of the freezer ceiling where there are any coils. Once you clearly mark where the coils are, you can turn the freezer back on and proceed with your install. Next, take out your cold wall brackets. These brackets will be fastened to the ceiling of the merchandiser by screwing them into the ceiling and front and rear wall joint. The joint in the ceiling where the front and back wall meet is an area where there are few coils, if any. Our cold wall brackets will be secured by screwing into this seam. We use these brackets and this method in order to minimize the risk of hitting a coil. The bracket consists of four parts. They are two pairs of telescoping metal panels that will be secured to the cold wall merchandiser by fastening screws into the ceiling and wall joint. Place the pair of telescoping brackets together until they are flush with the front and back wall. Once you have determined the interior depth of your particular freezer front to back, mark the bracket with this measurement. Now using the four screws provided, screw the brackets together according to your particular measurement. Do this on the right and left side. The placement of these brackets will depend on the size of your channel. The placement of these brackets is perpendicular to the front of the freezer and the sensor channel extends about 8 inches on each end. Next, place the brackets in the ceiling of the freezer and use the helping hands for assistance if needed. Use the sheet metal screws to fasten the brackets to the ceiling seam between the front and back walls of the merchandise. Finally, place the channel in the freezer using your helping hands for assistance with the center line in the middle and five to eight inches from the front wall and parallel to the front. Now it is time to drill the exit hole out the back of the freezer. Again, it's critical to note the frost line so you do not hit coils inside the freezer. The preferred location of the hole is out the back of the freezer, but if you do not have access out the back, drill a hole through the ceiling and into the compressor area, being sure not to hit any coils. Once you have located a safe place to drill the exit hole, proceed with your 1 and an eighth inch hole saw bit. In this example, I have carefully drilled a hole out the back and through the ceiling for your reference. Please note the discoloration of the freezer back wall where the coil comes down from the compressor. The best way to find out where the coils are is to note where the frost buildup is by turning on the freezer. Next, thread the cable through the hole you drilled and use the cable ties to secure the cable to the brackets. The remainder of the installation is exactly the same as an auto defrost merchandiser. Using your plumber's putty, pack the hole around the cable so it is watertight. Do this on both the inside and outside of the freezer. Then take a black plastic grommet 
and snip it into a C shape. Place the grommet around the cable and slide it into the hole. Make sure to tidy up any loose putty so it looks clean and professional. Do this on both sides, the inside and the outside. Now you're done with the inside aspect of the installation. Remove the blanket and any other material inside. Remember, don't forget your helping hands. Now using your step ladder, gain access to the top of the freezer. Take the screws off the cowling that covers the compressor on top of the freezer and remove the cowling. Next, take the Y adapter supplied in your install kit and find the hot black and white wire which is part of the merchandiser's wiring harness. It is the one with the black and white two-prong lead. This wire should supply power to the light if there's one. If there is no light, this lead oftentimes has black electrical tape on it. Attach the Y adapter to that connection, black to black, white to white. Tapping into this wire and most wiring harness will give you AC power whenever the freezer is running. Now, take the cable from the back of the freezer, coil up the excess wire, place a zip tie around it and carefully zip tie it to a suction line on the compressor, being sure not to attach it to any high temperature or moving parts. Next, take the controller and write down the serial number. This is crucial so you do not screw the cowling back on without noting this number. Take the power supply wire found in your install kit and plug it into the 110 volt end on the Y adapter. Then take the black controller and attach it to the main cable. Carefully insert the 10 pin connector with a quarter turn to the right. The final step is to take the other end of the power supply wire and plug it into the last open wire on the IceQ main cable. On any outdoor model, be sure to wrap the sticky coax seal provided in your parts bag on both the connections of the power supply, making sure they are watertight. At this point, your ice cube channel is now live. The blue light should be blinking and it will begin communicating. Secure the cowling back on the freezer. You are now ready to assign the device to your location using your smartphone or tablet. Open up your mobile phone browser and type in iceq.cool. If you've never logged in before, you will see a page that looks like this. Go ahead and put in your email and password and hit login. What we want to do is find the location that we just added that freezer to. That location we can find by hitting the hamburger icon up in the upper right hand corner. Go ahead and find the hourglass to get your search screen. And in this case, we set up a test location you could type in the account number, address, any part of the location. I'm going to just put in the word test. And here we can see the location, but it has no freezer. So let's go ahead and assign a freezer by clicking the plus sign. We're going to go and put in a model 60 upright. The product ratio is going to be 50-50. On the left, we're going to sell 7s. On the right, we're going to sell 20s. The condition of this freezer is good and it is by the register. Hit save, then hit the X to go back. Here's our Model 60 freezer, but we need to assign Ice Q. Easily enough, just click the green button, and I hope you remember to write down that number. If not, grab your ladder, take the cowling off, and find the Ice Q serial number. Go ahead and type it in. It's a smart search, so as you type, it finds the numbers. Go ahead, select the device, hit save, and now I've assigned this device. The next thing you'll need to do is click the refresh to have the unit give you the measurements that you just recorded. Anytime you power cycle the unit, you will get new readings. So make sure to validate sensors one through three in this case, and make sure the temperature is good. You can see that the unit called in, the time, the temperature. These are the number of inches from the top of the channel to the first bag of ice. So we have 27 inches, 24 inches, 23 inches. If everything looks good, you are good to go. Congratulations, you just installed IceCube.